Praise God forever. Happy Father's Day to all the dads. We welcome everybody if you're a first-time visitor. God bless you and thank you for coming. It's a beautiful day outside. Nothing to be upset about anywhere if you're a child of God. A better day is coming. If you'll look right in those cameras and we'll say good morning to Lake Park and Union Road. Good morning, both of you. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles. I keep doing that. That's an old habit. But we're going to look specifically and deliberately at the ministry of Jesus Christ today as intercessor and advocate. Father, open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Before you flop down there, turn around and look at 10 or 12 people, smile, give some kind of signal, high five, bump it. All right, you may be seated. Uh, there are two passages that I want to open with. The first is Hebrews 7, verses 24 and 25. I'd like you to read aloud with me. Ready? But he, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. Wow. And then Romans 8.34. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Today, we are looking at minutes on the clock, segments of time, activities to do. Where God is, there is no time, no segments. Today, Jesus Christ is calling your name to the Father. He is speaking your name. He is telling the Father exactly how you feel and what you are going through. He is asking the Father for a blessing on you. I don't think you're hearing me. I'm speaking of an individual. God has heard your name today in the courts of heaven. Evan Albertine. That name has resounded through heaven today. It landed on the ears of Almighty God and it came from the tongue of His risen Son, Jesus. For the express purpose of representing... Evan Albertine to Evan Albertine's father. Mm. The Bible teaches us that Christ was a prophet. He will be a king. He's not king yet. You know, we keep saying king of kings and lord of lords, but he isn't that yet. He will not be king of kings and lord of lords until he comes back to this earth and sets up his earthly reign here. Today, his ministry is intercession and advocacy. I'll make it plain and clear here in just a minute. As an intercessor, he stands before or sits beside the Father and represents your weaknesses and your failures to the Father. You are full of them. We are fraught 
with weakness and failure. And Jesus ever lives to make intercession for those in the body of Christ. That's what he does all the time. Calling our names. Speaking of us in the realm of heaven. He prays constantly for all whom the Father has given him. He prays always for every member of the body of Christ. Every part of the church of God. And what does he pray? He prays for their keeping, their protection. He prays that their weaknesses might become strength. He prays that their helplessness might be replaced, replaced by his ability. But he prays for God the Father to keep them, protect them. Don't know when I've done quite this before, but I'm going to call out several verses in John chapter 17. This is often called the high priestly prayer of Jesus. Are you with me? Nod. And they're going to throw certain scriptures up on the board. Let me say that in this 17th chapter, Jesus does nothing but pray. In the first few verses, he prays for himself. The Bible says he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. Father, glorify me in your own presence. That's the first part of the prayer. He prays for himself to be glorified with the Father. Do you think the Father would ever say no to a prayer of Jesus. That's so weak it just tears me up. <laughs> In the next few verses, he prays for his disciples. Verse number six I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me. And they have kept your word. Yes, even Peter. <laughs> For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. And brother, that is salvation right there. He goes on, I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world but for those you have given me. All mine are yours and yours are mine and I'm glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them. In your name which you have given me. I have guarded them. And not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction. That the scriptures might be fulfilled. Verse 15. I do not ask that you take them out of the world. But that you keep them from the evil one. Verse 19. And for their sake I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask you again, do you think the Father answered this prayer? Thank you. And in the last part of this chapter, he prays for all believers. <laughs> Father, I desire, in verse 24, that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am. Now let's back up a couple of verses here. Verse number 20. 
I do not ask for these only, speaking of the disciples, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That's a prayer for me. That's a prayer for you. That they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us. Good God Almighty. So that the world may believe that you have sent me the glory that you've given me, I've given to them that they may be one as we are one. I in them, you in me, that they may become perfectly one. Now look at that verse again. Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am. And I would submit to you if the Father answered the first prayer Jesus prayed for himself, and if the Father answered the second prayer that Jesus prayed for his apostles, then he certainly has answered the prayer that he prayed for all believers. Folks, God the Father answers every prayer Jesus has ever prayed. He was praying for you and me that we might be with him where he is, that we might be one in him. You see, the Father and the Son are inseparable. They all, even when they were on earth. Physically, there was a Father in heaven and a Son on earth, but they were one indivisibly, inseparably united to each other. They had the same cause. They had the same thoughts. They were perfectly in sync. There was nothing uh, different one towards the other. They were one. He prayed that we might be one with him. Can you imagine the son asking something that the father wouldn't grant? Can you imagine the son asking something that is out of the father's will? Absolutely not. He prayed only the Father's will. And so this verse tells me without doubt, it is as blatant as it can possibly be, that we are not here today because we've tried real hard and have kept up a good pace. We are here today kept by the power of God because a prayer answering father heard his son say, keep them through thy word. Thy word is truth. He heard the son say, Lord, God, Father, I want them to be where I am, that we may all be together one of these days and for eternity. I'm on my way to heaven. You can't stop me. The devil can't stop me. I can't stop me. Nothing can stop me because the prayer of Jesus has already been answered and we are written in the Lamb's book of life. He prayed, he prayed concerning their keeping, their destiny. Friend, Till you get to heaven, you will never know what the Lord has protected you from. You don't have any idea how many close calls you've had in your life. But the Father heard the prayer of the Son 2,000 years ago. I was joking with a couple of brothers out here. Before church, I don't know, I just like to talk smack before church sometimes. You know, I don't always want to walk up to people and say, how are you today? And they say, I'm blessed and highly favored. How are you, Pastor? Or I'm best and highly flavored. I was talking to some brothers about Vietnam, about, you know, smoking a little weed and stuff. And that brother was saying, I've come to realize I might have been there smoking weed and dodging bullets, but God had me on his mind and God had a plan for my life. And I said, if y'all let me preach just a minute, and I said, if you knew how many bullets and how many uh, pieces of shrapnel and mortar shells the Lord stood and protected you from, even while you were smoking weed, wacky backy, you wouldn't believe it today. But God heard the prayer of Jesus a long time ago and protected him from every danger, toil, and snare. 
God Almighty. When you get to heaven and find out, it'll take a glorified body not to wilt, not to faint and say, oh my God. And we're all here today because of his unfailing intercession. He's never lost but one sheep. And he didn't lose him. That was according to the scriptures. That was already designed. And so when we all get to heaven, you'll hear Jesus say that. None has been lost of all that the Father has given me. And if we got enough sense at that moment, we'll remember one of those little verses that we can all quote. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I will have no lack. What does that mean? We often think of it as clothes, right? Food, shelter, protection. No. No. It also means you'll never lack anything that God requires of you. You will never lack righteousness or holiness. You will never lack in the requirements of Almighty God because Jesus shed blood, satisfied every demand of a holy God. And yes, you will not lack. He will put food on the table. Oh, you'll have clothes on your back. You'll have whatever you need in this present world. But ladies and gentlemen, it is Jesus who is also providing the righteousness and the peace that satisfies the demands of God. And when he looks at you, he smiles. He delights because of what Jesus prayed before he went to the old rugged cross. They are one, exactly in agreement, father and son. If you go to Luke chapter 22, another well-worn verse of Scripture. The Lord walks up to Peter and says, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Don't let this slip. It was an appointment in heaven that Satan had with the Father about a certain individual. The Father entertained Lucifer. And Lucifer said, Almighty, I request to be able to get to Peter, Simon, I want you to see what he's made of. Let me at him. The father said, go ahead. The father then informs Jesus, his son. Now, Lucy has been here again. <laughs> and he has asked for one of your boys that I gave you, Peter. He wants to run him through the grinder, stomp him in the ground, strip him beat him, bleed him, bust him, break him. And I want you to let that happen. Jesus said, thank you, Father. Simon, Simon, just got word from above that Lucifer has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you. But I have prayed for you. I have interceded for you. Ladies and gentlemen, at some point, Satan, your arch enemy, through his cohorts and emissaries, will, will request to sift you and me as wheat. Some of you may be in the sifting now, some of you may be coming through it. And some of you may be feeling the pangs of the beginnings of a sifting. 
And I just want you to know when it hits, it hurts. And it's at that moment you find it difficult to raise your hands and smile and say, everything is beautiful, I love my life. Please remember, Jesus said, I have prayed for you. Now, it's good if you can get your friends to pray for you. It's really good if you can get somebody on the 1-800-PRAY-FOR-ME line out of Tulsa. <laughs> if you can. Uh, we got a call from Focus on the Family the other day. How can we pray for you? I don't even know you. I rode by a Presbyterian church the other day on the way home from the golf tournament, the church golf tournament. And the sign said, how may we pray for you? I thought that was pretty impressive. I wondered how many stopped in to tell them. <laughs> Just wondering. None of that matters at all, though, because Jesus has already approached the Father, sat down by the Father, is leaning over to the Father, and He's already called your name and said, said Father, keep them through the sifting. I've prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned, not if, not if, it's a done deal. It's a fixed match. When you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Now you can't tell me that there was a drum roll in heaven and all of the angels were crossing their fingers trying to figure out if Peter was going to make it or not. The father was not sitting there going, we'll see, we'll see. No, sir. He already answered the prayer of Jesus. It went even farther back than that. It wasn't at that moment. It was before the world was made. It was before anything was made that God already knew that Peter was going to be an apostle, had a call on his life, gave him a message to the Gentiles. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what kind of sifting you go through, the prayer has already gone through, and the answer will come. <laughs> when Christ prays, it's perfect prayer. It's a deliberate and absolute prayer. And his intercession is without end. Not just one prayer. He ever lives to make intercession for the saints. That's why he says in Hebrews chapter 7, go there again. But he, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. He saves to the uttermost. Do you know what uttermost means? I was about to give you a Greek word, and then I thought, I don't remember it. Something like pangtelios, which means perfectly and forever. Don't you forget forever. He saves perfectly and he saves forever. And that's because he ever lives to make intercession for them. Ladies, gentlemen, brothers, sisters. Jesus is the prayingest being in the universe. He never stops praying. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't run out of things to pray about. He doesn't have a list. He has a spirit of intercession. And every day of your life, your name is being called. Your need is being presented. You cannot... Oh, I feel so much strength in me right now. I'm about to go cross. I, you cannot lose this battle. You cannot lose this life. You cannot lose this joy. It is yours. God gave it. Hallelujah. Somebody, I'm always asked, well, Pastor, can you lose your salvation? I can. 
because I lost my sunglasses last week. <laughs> nice pair of sunglasses. In fact, I've, I've lost two pairs on the golf course. I lost a nice watch. Left it in the golf cart, Evan. Yeah, two pairs of sunglasses. Uh, what did I say? Watch. My watch, because I'm getting ready to go down the list. I lose things every day. So if I can lose my sunglasses, my keys, my watch, my patience, my temper, my everything, then I can lose my salvation. But it is not my salvation. It's his salvation. That's why David said, return to me the joy of thy salvation. It's his salvation that he gives to me. And if it were up to me to keep it, I'd have already lost it. I don't care if y'all like what I'm preaching or not. If it were up to me to keep it, I'd already be out of here. Lost it. Where is it, Pastor? Don't know. Don't, I don't know what time of the morning I lost it. Yeah, it starts early in the morning. But the Bible teaches us he will lose none of his. Folks, it's not a matter of me losing my salvation. It's a matter of him losing a sheep. Did, did, was it that deep? <laughs> Won't you quit asking, can I lose my salvation and start asking, can Christ lose one of his sheep? What do you think? There you go. How do I know I'm one of his sheep? Bah. <laughs> because I have believed on the name of the Son of God. There you go. When I believe on the name of the Son of God, I am born again. I become a new creation in Christ Jesus. And the process of growing in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord continues every day. For God to lose me would be to forfeit an unfinished project. It would be for God to say, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to work with this piece of pottery anymore. And God has never done that. Some of you are looking at me like, I don't know about this now. Well, you're still sitting here, aren't you? Do you think you got you here? Do you, oh, God help me. Some of y'all really, you wind my stem. Do you honestly think that God saved you and then said, I hope you can do it. I hope you're strong enough. And are you arrogant and audacious enough to say, yes, sir, I've done it. I've got a made up mind. Oh, how arrogant and foolish you are. That's why you need an intercessor. To go and say, Father, he's just stupid. <laughs> I'm getting, getting a little out of hand here. I'm on. But not only is he my intercessor, he's my advocate. Watch this, Hebrews 9, 24. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, intercession is Jesus approaching God because of our weakness. Advocacy is Jesus approaching God because of our sins. 1 John 2 and 1. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins... We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. See? You know this. He said, don't sin. Act like a Christian. You're already saved. Put on the garment of praise and righteousness. Clothe yourself in righteousness. Do the right thing. Act like a Christian. But if you mess up, you have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus 
Christ. Now, when I sin, does that mean Jesus has to die again or shed more blood? Nope. The Bible says his sacrifice was once for all. But he continues to represent me. He doesn't go to the Father and excuse me because sin cannot be excused. He doesn't go to the Father and ask for pity. The Father does not pity people who have the Holy Spirit and the Word and make stupid decisions. Here's what, God, here's what Jesus does when I mess up. He walks right off his throne and stands in front of the Father and goes, nail scars. And the Father says, yes, it's already been paid for. <laughs> Just nail scars. There they are. I did it, Lord. Father, this is the price I paid for him. This is the price I paid for them. And the Father says, my son, because of your blood sacrifice and your constant intercession and your unending advocacy, I forgive. wonder if that's the first thing we'll see Jesus do when we get to heaven. What if I were to drop dead of a heart attack right now? Boom! On my 40th anniversary. That would mess up lunch big time. Maybe. I don't, I don't. What if I stop breathing, my heart stops beating, and the next face I see is Jesus? I wonder if he'll go. Because of his shed blood, we are totally, absolutely, and always accepted in the beloved. For someone who moans and groans over personal sin, isn't that a blessed consolation? For someone who's more and more conscious of sin every day in our lives and weakness and failure, isn't that a blessed, blessed consolation? He ever lives to make intercession for the saints. Stand with me, please. I, I want to try to say this in a different way. Whatever you're going through, God already knows about it. It's been discussed. Your name was called. Whatever you're facing, it's already been discussed in heaven. You say, but I have blown it. Yeah, that was discussed too. And that's what his blood took care of. And that's what this is all about. Oh, my. After church last night, I had several people come up to me and say, I love that message. I wish I'd heard that a long time ago. But let me ask you this. I did thus and so. What will happen to me when I get to heaven? Nothing. When you get to heaven, there will not be one accusing finger pointed at you. When you get to heaven, all there will be is acceptance because of Jesus Christ. He has kept us. He deserves praise. He prays for us. He represents us. I'm a scoundrel. You know I am. You are too. But the longer I live, the more I appreciate him taking care of us scoundrels. Let me just say to somebody who might not know Jesus today or someone who's so wrapped up in the mess you made of your life that you don't think you can get out. You know, it's like one of those wet morning spider webs. You run through it and you just can't seem to get rid of the... You can't get rid of it. it drives you crazy. Hey... Jesus Christ died and rose again with nail scars in his hands so that when you call his name, 
He calls your name to the Father and there is forgiveness and cleansing from all unrighteousness. And all you have to do is call on Him. Am I telling the truth? About 400 of you, come down here right quick. Fill up the steps. We'll leave in just a moment. Uh, when will you do it? I mean, while we're still young. While we're still young. While we're still young. Come down and join me. We want to have an intercessory prayer for each other right now. Woo, this is a fast-moving crowd. Look. My goodness. Double A-R-P 830 service. I just changed my mind about something. I'm going to pray for you. <clears throat> I'm going to pray while they're coming down the steps. I'm going to pray while everybody's moving around. I'm going to pray this prayer. That you will realize. That you will grasp. The intercessory ministry. That Jesus is engaged in right now for you that you will understand that we have an advocate someone to stand before God who is completely acceptable to God who is calling your name in prayer I pray that and I'm asking you to receive it in Jesus name I'm asking you to throw sorrow aside and disappointment and heartache. Throw it, throw it away. Throw it away. I'm asking you to be done with hurt feelings. I'm asking you to be done with failure. Just throw it away. Because in Jesus, you have everything you need right now. Can the choir say amen? I just hate it when I'm happier than everybody else in the whole cotton-picking building. I needed what I preached today. What are you praying? Yes. How sweet the sound.
have a happy day. Kiss dad if you have one. I wish I did. I'd kiss him. Love your family. Love each other. Enjoy the life God has given us. Look forward to heaven. Walk in the Spirit. Be thankful for everything. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. For the Lord Himself is your peace and your righteousness and your acceptance. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. See you next time unless Jesus comes.